only way you're gonna get better, man, you gotta put the work in. Brothers on three. One, two, three, brothers! Everything that we do out here is for a purpose. Hey, you gotta get in there and fight now. You gotta get in there and fight. Let's stop that talking and let's just do it, bro. Family on three, one, two, three. Hey. The Aggies are coming off a loss, but college football doesn't wait for teams to sulk. It's always on to the next, although for the seniors, after Saturday, there is no next when it comes to playing in Kyle Field. time we play. So make sure you're getting where you need to be this week to play as good as you can, uh, the best you can this week. And, and a lot of guys hopefully will have that opportunity to play this week. It's our last home game. Okay? The last time you'll be in this stadium this year for a game with people there. Make sure you give the kind of performance that you want to remember, be remembered for. Take it with seniors. Uh, and for you guys here. All right, set the tone for the rest of the year. Hey, 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 good two days of practice. Let's keep it up. Finish strong this week. Let's go. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Folks are, folks are moving here. We've got a good crowd here at the Fan Zone Center. They are starting to move towards the gates and to their seats for this uh, final home game of the year. I'm so happy that the last home game is under the lights. There is nothing like uh, home, home football under the lights at Kyle Field. Offense, hey, let's have some fun tonight. All right, let's do this for the seniors. They've laid the foundation for us in the SEC. Your job tonight is doing the best you've ever done. And we'll come off that field a happy football team. Get in tight and listen to me. This is for everybody tonight who is a senior on this field. This is a special deal. This is a real special deal. And it goes by, I don't care who was playing. If you step on that field tonight, you give it everything you've got, you hear me? Everything you've got. I hear you. This is a special moment, this is a special team, okay? We're gonna win this game, and we're gonna win it by a lot, and we're gonna do it for each other. For the people in this huddle and nobody else, boys. I'm getting it in tight. It's the best breakout we've had all year, right here. Thank you, those three. One, two, three. Hey. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. The Polls, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Memorial Herman, official sports medicine partner of Texas A&M Athletics. The Aggies start playing here at 6-3 and three overall. We are 3-3 three and three in the league. We're 3-0 oh non-conference games. First time ever for Texas A&M against uh, Western Carolina. All right, Dave, the Western Carolina Catamounts won that toss, and they elected to receive. So WCU will get the ball to start this game. Those people came up for this last one, man. Let's have a good time, man. Let's make a statement, dog. Let's go, man. Let's make a statement. They've had a man going in motion, and that guy got the pitch coming back to this side. And just like that, they pick up about eight yards. And they had trouble there on the handoff. It wasn't a clean handoff. Newsom is racked up, and it's a tackle for loss by Miles Garrett. It's going to be a three and out now for the Catamounts. The ball is moved back to the 23-yard line. Handoff. Carson cuts the corner around the right side. Got a first down. He's across the 50 and into Catamount territory at the 47-yard line in the backfield three wides to the left the throw intercepted by the catamounts and it's returned now inside the 35 and down to the 30 yard line 
And for Kyler Murray, that will be the sixth time he's thrown an interception this season. It's picked off by Daniel Riddle. Kyler Murray used his speed to stop him from taking it to the house. And now uh, Catamounts will have it uh, in Aggie territory at the 30-yard line. Snapped, forced out of the pocket, brought down, throw, and intercepted in the end zone. And we're going to try to bring it out, and we will. That shouldn't have been done. Dunning will get his uh, first pick. The freshman from White House, Deshaun Hall, was applying the pressure that time as Mitchell unloaded the ball, and it's picked off. Both quarterbacks miss fire early. The settling in is over. It's time for the Aggie offense to explode. Hey, Mikey, you need some love? Give me a little something, something. Oh, no! Let's go, baby. Oh! Carson's trying to find a hole, did turn the corner, ankle tackle, he falls forward across the 15, got about 10 yards, he got three more, Davis, he was falling down, <laughs> White will get the handoff, it's over the left side, big hole, 40, 45, 50, across the 50, now to the 45, and down at the Catamount, 44 yard line, this offensive line is opening up huge holes in that defense, and it's been snapped, and there's a throw, and that's Ricky Seals-Jones, and he will go to the 39-yard line. Here's a throw. That's a catch. And it's across the 45. That's a first down. Texas A&M. Tabuyo will catch it. Tackled by Trey Morgan. It's a first and 10. Carson has the handoff. He gets 5. He gets 10. He's got 15. He's all the way down to the 10-yard line. Here we go. Handoff. Fights for the end zone. Did he get in? He did. Touchdown. That's Carson. Carson carries for his seventh touchdown of the season. 7 of the game and have 5.47 to go. Play action. He kept the ball, drug down by the jersey from the backside. That'll be a sack by Texas A&M. That's Quaylen Cunningham. And the kick is wobbling, backing up. And it comes at the 23-yard line. And it's Kirk cutting a pass to this side. 40, 45, 50. Stops, starts up again. Christian Kirk on an electric return right there. Play action for him. A fake handoff, wide open end zone, touchdown Texas A&M. Tabuyo and his third touchdown of the season. Oh, couldn't been more wide open. It was double post, but he did like a deep two hands, I think. Oh. He ran in, and they did that invert deal, and he ran in with Ricky, and he, no one covered him. After detonating, the offense starts dominating. But a couple of big plays help the underdog Catamounts scratch back. First down and 10 at the 18 for Western Carolina. Low snap, handoff, oh, big hole. And he's breaking free at the 40. Now inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. Play action. And it's the uh, fullback again, and he's going to score. Fake the handoff. Looked downfield, turned, and gave it back to uh, Newsom, and he scores on that one. Here's the approach. Little sidewinder, bouncing, rolling. Picked up at the seven yard line. The 15, that's Kirk. Ball's free. Oh my. They're going to pick it up and they're going to score a touchdown if he wasn't down. A touchdown. The ball came free. They have picked it up and they have returned it for a touchdown. Now they're an extra point from tying it up. 11.58 to go. In football, momentum can slip away in a hurry. Fortunately, the Aggies had a little time before the half to grab it again. And another throw. It's Kirk again at the 10, inside the 10, fighting at the 5. He's inside the 1, and he is a touchdown! 14 on that one, and he earned every yard of that one. 21 to 14 is the score at halftime tonight, and the Aggies lead. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Pepsi, official soft drink of Texas A&M athletics. We've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks about turnover ratio. And so, you know, we, we, we've got to handle that, but we also got to finish drives when we have the football. We're going up and down the field. But, uh, you know, 21 points and 300 yards is, you know, we should have more points in there. The Aggies moved the ball in the first half, yet did not put up enough points. Finishing drives has now become a focal point. In the third quarter, dominance became a must. Quite frankly, 
Kevin Sumlin expected it. And Murray is going to run with the ball. Don't think he got it. He will think they're going to spot him at the 42-yard line. Looks like they're going for it. And the Aggies will get the first down. Diving across the 45 is White. Throw. Kirk caught it at the line of scrimmage. Spun away from one man. He's uh, developed this. Now you see me, now you don't. He's so quick. 47-yard effort. Here it goes. And it is going to clear. He made it. Those all got it this time. Just got five yards. Those all, the handoff, got the first down. Dancing around, looking, looking, looking. Rolling for the corner. And he is going to get a first down. Turned on the Jets. The bottom of his shoes were on fire. Caden Smith with an outstanding block. And it's going to be a throw and a catch on a bobble. And I think it's a touchdown. What happened? Yep, to he's a and m And it's going to be Damian Radley. Good job, man. That's a lot better. A&M scored on all three of their third quarter drives. The final tally coming on Taylor Bertolette's fifth field goal from 50 plus yards this season. Meanwhile, the defense started to tighten their grip on the Catamounts by locking them up on third down. Half back on the right side, got the handoff. He fights for the first down. He's not gonna get it. Third and one. The quarterback will keep. And I don't think oh, he, he got it. He did not. He's gonna be dropped inside his own 50. Listen, what we can't do is start jumping out of our gap. Yeah. Does that make sense? Just keep dominating the gap. Newsom is using those legs, pushing as hard as he can to get to the 35. He'll come up short by a half yard. And hit in the backfield and drop for a loss. Back at the 32-yard line will be defensive end Jarrett Johnson. What a great time for that play. Great penetration by Jarrett Johnson. Well, that's great time getting off. Ripping the gap will make it play fast. To start the fourth quarter, Kyle Allen was inserted into the lineup. He took no time reminding the 12th man of his downfield capabilities, nor did he take any time finding the end zone. Here's Allen throwing deep on the first ball and coming back to making the catch. Kirk at the 30, on his back, down at the 25. Kyle Allen steps in, delivers it for 43 yards, all the way to the Western Carolina 25-yard line. Green to this side. It is Kirk. Used a block to turn the corner. He's on the sideline. He's going to score. Oh, 22 yards. A great block at about the 15-yard line. And he goes into the end zone to give the Aggies 40 points for the night. Three plays, 68 yards. It took 59 seconds. Well, I'd say that's a pretty good drive. They're in the end zone. Kirk now tonight, 198 yards all-purpose. H-back is in there, and a tackle <laughs> behind the line. How many times back. have we seen Daylon Mack come in and just wreck a play like that? He gets, he's so quick off the ball, he almost took the handoff. Low snap, picked it up off the crown, and he's going to be sacked. They brought it in a blitz, Dave. <laughs> I mean, they, they had people coming. Jacoby and Henderson likely will get credit for that sack. The defense only allowed a second-half field goal. The offense continued to march with ease. They scored on every second half possession except the last one. Even then, they churned out 78 yards, most coming on Bryce Dolezal carries. The Aggies elected to stop themselves to end it, taking a knee and foregoing more points. 583 total yards was enough dominance for one evening. The Polls, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by ASCO, your place for case construction equipment in Texas. It's that uh, senior night, those guys running out of that tunnel onto the field for the last time. Uh, any emotions to it at all for you <laughs> seeing that unfold? A lot. You know, they're, they're guys that uh, are tough guys. They're, they're guys that, uh, you know, you think you wouldn't get any kind of uh, response from and uh, you know 
he won't, he probably won't say it, but uh, I watched Devontae Harris cry like a baby. He loves Texas A&M. So, you know, that one, there, there's always the one that throws you off. Talking to Mike Matthews as he's running off the field, and it, we knew it was his, his last drive, and it was when Christian Kirk scored, and I was like, your last play in Kyle Field ended on a touchdown. So, you know, not very many people can say that. But, you know, it, it, I think the reality set in right there with Mike going, hey, that's the last time you're ever going to suit up and go run out there in front of the 12th man. You know, it, it's a special place, and these kids really enjoy being around, uh, you know, playing here at Kyle Field and being around this 12th man. And it, it, it's something that these guys will always, uh, always remember for the rest of their lives. You know, I, I say it every week and people get tired of it, but uh, the turnover ratio is the biggest stat in college football there is. And the teams are, that are plus are the teams that are winning championships. The teams that are minus are the teams that are kind of milling around in the middle. And then if you're way down, you got no chance to win. Playing quarterback is a lot more than just throwing the ball. Or, or, or it's a lot of things. We challenged them this week in terms of uh, you know the game plan. I wanted them to, to operate and be a quarterback. So I called a mix of everything. We, you know, from run pass options to, you know, drop back in the pocket to sprint outs on the run, some naked and bootlegs and, and you know, quick game. So, you know, we made them operate an entire game plan. And, uh, you know, you got to come out there and show us consistently that you're improving because, you know, who, who knows what's going to happen, but we're going to put the best guy in the game that's going to help us win. The Poles, Texas A&M football is brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Moving on. Okay, we go back. Go back to SEC play this week, right? We got to go up there and create our own energy. More energy than we had in this building tonight on the sideline. And whoever goes up there, all right, we're going up there for one purpose, and that's to win. Be 1 0 this week. I'm sick of coming in here every week and saying we haven't played our best football yet. You don't need to wait for me or for these coaches or from anybody else to start yelling and screaming for that to happen. You gotta want it yourself. We gotta have it on the sideline. We gotta have it in the huddle, all right? You gotta believe in, what, in who you are. It's just gonna be us up there. This week is all about us. And from here on out, for the next two weeks, it's about the people in this room, all right? Not the people outside this room who have had a lot of things to say about the people in this room, right? Yes, sir. A lot of things to say about it. okay? You owe it to each and every body in here to be at your best. The talk in this room is what's important. That's what I care about. <coughs> right? That's what you should care about. Because we got a lot of football to play.